you can see it. Good, excellent. Um, so basically, I'd like to talk a little bit about the EIT and the EIT community, which is the community of the the kicks um, within the EIT, and also um, a little bit about our global outreach program and our EIT hub in China. So first of all, a little bit about the European Institute of Innovation and Technology or the, the EIT. Um, as Haldorberg, you've said, um, it's part of the European Union. It's an independent body of the, of the EU, although it actually reports um, jointly now into um, the Directorate Generals of Education and Research. So it's very much part of the research and innovation landscape in Europe. It was set up um, in 2008 um, with the view to deliver innovation across Europe. And it now comprises uh, eight of these knowledge innovation communities or KICs, each of which is dedicated to finding um, solutions to a specific global challenge. Um, the partners in these communities um, are from business, both large and small, um, universities, research institutes, regional city governments and NGOs, really any sector. And each kit can have between 100 and 400 partners. It's very flexible. Um, so um, I suppose just one quick comment. If you are a researcher um, working on innovation and perhaps setting up a small company, you can participate in kick activities uh, without becoming a partner, but you can also become a partner. The role of the KICS is broadly to develop innovative products, services, start new companies and train a new generation of entrepreneurs. It really looks at innovation um, across everything, not just technology, but finance, um, society, behaviour, um, looking at policy, looking at regulations, any innovation that will help us to advance in addressing a challenge. And together, collectively, um, the goal of the KICS is really to give power and strength to innovators and entrepreneurs across Europe to turn their best ideas into products, into services, jobs and, and growth, and particularly green growth, and also now very much healthy green growth in the context of COVID-19. So to show you the slide again, um, these are the eight innovation communities or kicks. So we have climate kick, um, digital, food, health, energy, manufacturing, raw materials and urban mobility. They, these are the existing ones, there may be more. They have been developed in phases. So the first three started in 2010 and that was climate, digital and energy. And then a second phase came three years later, which was health and raw materials. And then a little bit later again, there was food. And then last year, urban mobility and manufacturing started. Um, so they are still um, quite young and developing fast. Each kick um, is an independent legal entity um, and each has its own core, um, very distinctive thematic area. Um, and these will really match the major societal challenge that the kick is set up to address. And I've said a little bit about all the partners. They come across disciplines, they are across sectors, across national boundaries. And basically we have partners in all the countries of Europe but, and also some in associated countries um, such as Israel. The kicks are funded by the EIT, but also have to raise a lot of their own funding externally. And with time, they have to become more and more independent. So the kicks themselves are rather like a startup as they begin. And then they have to, um, and they can use EIT funding for pump priming to get them going. But with time, they have to become independent businesses. I'm showing you this purely uh, as an example. This is the cross-sector partnership um, of uh, EIT Climate Kick. 
and really to show you that most of the kicks have a core of perhaps 20 or 30 partners who are their, their really senior core partners who help to develop the strategy for the kick. But they then have a very large number of other partners um, who help to deliver the activities um, for the kick. So kicks are based very much on this concept of a knowledge triangle where you bring research, business and higher education together to work together and have been very successful in doing that. And in fact, it's not only a knowledge triangle, um, we like to think of it as a knowledge pyramid or maybe a tetrahedron, um, but basically it's not just research, business and higher education. It is very important also to bring in um, governmental bodies for cities, for regions, uh, and also the non-governmental bodies as well. And very much also um, looking at what's often called the triple helix. Um, and we would like to talk about a quadruple helix that, to bring in the community, to bring in citizens. If you're going to solve problems of the world, um, you have to have citizens on board as well. Broadly, the KICs have three main types of activity, uh, which really are the three pillars of the knowledge triangle. So they are innovation, which is very much um, research, but um, research really at the interface from the sort of research typically one does in a university through all the way through to developing um, a business or an idea that can, a policy, a regulation that can then be taken up um, by the market or, or by government. So it's, um, it's very much at the applied end. Uh, but as you've seen, we have a lot of universities in our partnership. And so the kick forms a very effective interface um, between what university research is doing and um, then what the kicks can go on in terms of supporting um, the business ideas as you go forwards. And a lot of the universities have um, startup programs, accelerator programs um, that we um, that are integrated into the activities of, of the kicks. So innovation, entrepreneurship, very much how you support um, these um, young companies and take them forward. Uh, to the point when they're um, investor ready. And then finally, education, um, how to educate the next generation of entrepreneurs, but also how to use education um, as a learning tool. So knowledge triangle integration is a key feature um, of all the kicks. And to try to put that together for you into one diagram, it's really what we would like to call end-to-end -end innovation. So at the beginning, you have ideation, where the ideas come from. And um, these can come from many different places, but obviously a very substantial number will come from university research. Um, we have a lot of activities, which I can go into a little bit later for each of the steps um, on this diagram. So broadly then, you, the ideas come in. Um, there are then a suite of programs um, to help um, develop or people to develop those ideas, to incubate them, um, to put um, good business models together um, so that um, they can then be carried through and to develop them. And then um, scaling up if they're successful um, to um, really build up into a major project or a major business and then having it ready for market. So it's really a sequence of from bright ideas, how you bring in those ideas, how you support them through projects, accelerator programs, and then how you build them up. And then what we learn from those programs, we feed into our education and professional development programs. Um, so we provide the entrepreneurship training, um, masters, PhD, summer schools, professional training, and also citizen involvement. And we then can feed that back into um, the activities that we run. So it's a, a, a virtuous loop, if you like, where um, our experience as we develop the innovations, um, we can then weave back into our education program. 
So we're continually learning and then sharing those learnings um, with the students who we train. Okay, my, oh, I think my laptop has frozen. Oh, well. it, it's, it has, but it moved on to a different slide. My apologies. Okay, so just very quickly then going through those things, we have education programs. There are summer schools, uh, master's programs, PhD programs and professional training. I haven't given you details of every kick because each kick does things in a slightly different way. Um, some of the activities are restricted to students within kick partners. So, for example, um, I was previously at Imperial College in London, who is a partner of Climate Kick, and our students participated in a lot of the activities. But most of the activities are open to applicants externally. So certainly most would be um, open um, for those from all over the world. And I recommend you just look at the websites to find out more. Um, I, I'm not going, to, I'm going to show you, but not in um, the main screen mode, it's, I'm having trouble. I hope you can still see it um, when it's slightly smaller like this. With entrepreneurship programs, we have hackathons. They have a range of different names, Digital's Deep Hack, Climathon, Foodathon. They're all the same thing. And most of those are open um, across the whole world. Um, we have boot camps for early, um, early ideas and early um, startup programs. If your business is a little bit bigger, we run a whole series of accelerator programs. Um, all the kicks have accelerator programs. And for example, Climate Kick runs about 23 different programs in countries um, across Europe. And each one has a slightly different characteristic. So you can pick the program that suits the topic of your startup best. Uh, and then there are a range of different activities to um, advertise um, the startups um, and then to introduce them to investors. So as I've said, most of the hackathons and boot camps are open globally. Um, most of the accelerator programs are open widely as well. Um, but just some activities are restricted to startups that are already enrolled in the, um, the KIC programs. And again, look at websites and you can find out much more detail. And then with the innovation programs, um, as I've said, the, the focus is much closer to market um, than a typical university research project. As with what Heldelberg has said, um, you, there, is, there is never a project where there's a single partner or a single sector involved. Um, the, almost everything is bringing together those different sectors in a consortium. So partners can come from across all those different sectors and bring different approaches to uh, solving a single challenge. Um, normally funding for this is only open to partners if it's EIT funding, um, but if it's external funding, it's open to anyone. Um, and then, but the key issue is obviously even um, within the EIT funded projects, there will be new posts for people to work on them and they are openly advertised to anyone from outside the kicks. And again, each kick has its own um, job opportunities websites that you should look at. So where are we in Europe? Um, well, we have partners in every country of Europe. We have offices in most countries, um, shown here um, in um, the various colored dots. Um, and the main thing just to point out to you is that the head office of the EIT is located in Budapest um, and that we have um, multiple offices and innovation hubs then uh, where partners can come together and collaborate. Um, and these, as I've said, is uh, are really across the north, south, east and west of um, Europe. More recently, the EIT 
um, has put separate funding into establishing what have been called global outreach hubs uh, with three of these in Silicon Valley and Israel and very importantly for today in China um, and based at the moment uh, it will be the initial one will be in Beijing in China and the ethos behind this is um, to give a coordinated approach really to act as a shop window for European innovation and most importantly the last point on my slide to act as a bridge uh, to link the innovation ecosystem of the EIT community within the EU um, with the innovation ecosystems of the outreach locations in Silicon Valley in Israel and in China so the EIT hub in, chi in China um, is very new. In fact, it's so new, it has a very small number of launch activities this year. It doesn't yet have its office or staff, but I hope we're very close to being able to, to set that up. The location will be in central Beijing and um, there will be very close links with the EU delegation and with the European member states. And in fact, there's a good chance that the office will be um, located within the EU delegation. There'll be two staff um, running our hub office initially. Uh, and we do hope to have a launch event. Um, it was going to be face to face, but I think we might become imaginative as with your access and, and do it as an online event. Um, Basically, the role of the office will be to bridge EU and China innovation, um, to act as a landing platform um, for our EU innovators, giving them advice and support when they come to China, but equally for people in China to come and ask about the opportunities um, within the KICS in Europe. So a two-way information sharing, contact point matchmaking. Um, we're going to run, we've only run one so far, but what we're going to call Europe-China breakfast meetings. I think there'll be breakfast in Europe and perhaps early or late afternoon for you in, in China, but with some key European and Chinese speakers, and we'll do these online. Um, we have a program we call Green Q, um, which is a program to bring startups from Europe to China and prepare them for the very different uh, culture for business in China, and then conversely to um, bring Chinese startups to Europe um, and to prepare them um, for that, and really to help startups meet with bigger companies in the two different continents and to build up and scale up their business. And then what we're just beginning to, to run, and Haldor Berg joined our first impromptu one last week, is a series of online workshops to develop EU-China innovation programs in three areas, particularly healthy, sustainable cities, circular economy, and the agri-food value chain. And these are all key areas that the KICS in Europe work on um, and where um, we will be having a series of conversations over the coming months um, as to how we can work together um, between China and Europe um, in pushing forward um, our in work within those three um, major thematic um, areas. So thank you very much. Um, I hope that's given you um, an idea about the kicks. They're quite complicated animals. Um, and there are eight of them, and each one is complex in a slightly different way. Um, but, um, as I say, look at the websites for the specific details. And I don't know if our slides will be shared with you, but I have put all the websites here for you. Um, and you can find out a lot more about what the different kicks are doing from that. And bear in mind that some kicks are much newer than others, so if some look as if they have less on their website, for example, urban mobility and manufacturing. Um, remember, they only started last year, whereas some of us like climate and digital and inner energy have had 10 years experience. What I haven't said, but is really um, understood, I think, in this slide here, is that with the global outreach, this is all eight kicks working together um, and collaborating together. 
And as you, I'm sure you can imagine, you know, if you're looking at a healthy, sustainable city, it involves climate, it involves digital, energy, health. Um, it really involves all the kicks. And the same is true in, in the other areas as well. Thank you. Thank you very much.